Hugo! Hugo! Where's Mickey? No offense, Professor, but you beat me one more time on unofficial business, and I'm going to have to report you to the boss. And you don't want to get Mrs. Dennis mad. Hugo, this is an emergency. Where is Mickey? She went to find her diplomats. Ah, Mickey! Chance, what are you doing here? I had an irresistible urge to visit a monument. What do you think I'm doing here? I need the ticket. What ticket? The laundry ticket. The guy won't give me the shirts because I don't have a stub. Didn't you tell him you were my husband? My Vietnamese is a little rusty. The guy doesn't speak a word of English, and I got no ticket. <laughs> That's not very funny, Hugo. I got a 2.30 meeting with the dean. There's not one clean dress shirt in the house. Give me the ticket. I don't have it. Come on, you got to have it. It must be in your purse here. I toss it when I change purses. Did you check the trash? I don't believe this. Hugo, will you help me find Mr. Chirunda? He's completely disappeared. You lost the ticket and you lost the diplomat? You're losing things left and right. He's got to be around here somewhere. Hope he brought an extra shirt. You can find him. A little shirt with a collar, that's all I need. Curiosity always got you guessing. Questions spinning round in your mind. <laughs> Curiosity, find out what you're missing. Something going down all the time, yeah. Where you lead, don't you know that I will follow? We leave no stone to turn. Hey, hey! Curiosity. Stop and look and listen. You never know what you might find. Assumptions. The biggest trap a criminal investigator can fall into. At the scene of a crime, on the witness stand. How things appear and how they really are. Well, they're worlds apart. Do not take shortcuts. To quote the eminent criminologist Lewis Carroll, begin at the beginning, go until you come to the end, and then stop. Uh -huh. Now, is that not the timing of a professional educator or what? <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> Professor Dennis? Nope. I'm sorry, I, I thought... After that bell, it's only Mr. Dennis. Sometimes just chance. Justin Cookwell. My, uh... My card. The Interfund Group. Vice President. Sounds impressive. Yes, we're a closely held conglomerate of financial institutions and investment firms with assets uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $600 million. $600 million? Sounds like a very nice neighborhood. What can I do for you, Mr. Cookwell? I understand that you've done corporate security consulting work. Employee screening and evaluation, uh, behavioral testing, uh, profiling. Some. Mr. Dennis, do you believe that loyalty can be measured? Probably not by itself, but as it relates to other factors, uh, responsibility, honesty, deception, then maybe. You see, loyalty is the cornerstone of our company's structure. We believe very, very strongly in it. Much like IBM or the Japanese. So you think someone at the Interfund Group is being disloyal? One of these seven individuals has drained over $2 million from various Interfund accounts. And you'd like to plug that leak? That is exactly what we would like to do. Quietly. I mean, obviously, if word got out we had an embezzler, it would severely damage Interfund's reputation. My services don't come cheap. I'm authorized to offer 2500 as a retainer with an additional 2500 when the job is completed. Dollars? Well, you can have it in francs, yen, whatever you'd like. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. What if I don't find your investment? Your past record in security counseling is excellent, Mr. Dennis. We don't expect you to fail. But even if you do, you'll still receive your fee. That's very generous. Will you help us? Mr. Dennis. Sorry. Yes, I'll be happy to see what I can do. Five thousand 
million dollars? Win or lose. Whoa, I love the odds, and my baby's not gonna lose. And we can sure use that money. Oh, we sure can. Now, just what we need. Honey, I'm reading your mind. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, no, it's just because we're married. Oh, we waited long enough. It's time. Oh, it's now or never. We can finally get that Two second car. Two weeks in the Bahamas. Oh. Mickey. Sweetheart, I love your fingers, but I don't want them in the salad. Honey, do you know how long we've been talking about that vacation? You know how hard it is to get around this town with only one car? Honey, the travel brochures are so old, the trees are pink. Sweetheart, the other day I had to pick up my dry cleaning on my bicycle. I can just see myself lying on the beach. Oh. And I can see myself lying on the ground after my gray slacks got caught in the bike spokes and I was catapulted into the air. Chance. Honey, we do not have to talk about this right now. Why not? Because you just put the beef in a salad and you're stuffing the peppers with lettuce. What's the matter? No sense of adventure? Not that much. <laughs> what is the test called? The Masked Veil Multiphasic Personality Test. I see here on your file you took something similar when you first applied for the job. Mm-hmm. All the Interfund companies use the most advanced methods of screening. It can save a lot of trouble in the long run, but I don't see why I need to take another one. I think I still have the same multiphasic personality I've always had. <laughs> I'm sure you do. But I'm sorry. Do I feel I'm really part of my work group? What does that have to do with the promotion? Just part of the test, Miss Elliot. When do I get to... Do you sleep in the nude? <laughs> it's in there. What about any fun? Good people or just a job? Wonderful people. Wonderful. I'm honored to be given the opportunity to work for them. Wonderful. Wonderful. Tell them that is our final offer. And the shipment must be in Atlanta no later than Thursday. Now, if those terms are unacceptable, tell him to find a new career. You're a tough negotiator, Mr. Bradbury. A business climate isn't what it used to be. Doggy dog, eat dog huh? And anything else that gets in the way. Antifun seems to encourage the competitive spirit. Well, they don't like losers, that's for sure. You said this is about a promotion? That's right. I'm ready. This limo is looking a bit shabby. Ready for the junk heap, huh? You enjoy working for Antifun, or is it just a job? Antifun is more than a job. It's a way of life. So, what kind of tests? Job-related personality profiles, no homework. Oh, excuse me a minute. No. 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 None of this. Uh, but tell them to keep up the good work. Has Anna found a good company to work for, Mr. Hummel? Has the test begun yet? It started when we shook hands. <laughs> well, you're very good at this. Of course, somehow I knew you would be. Well, tell me about Anna Fund. Would you consider another company if the pay was equal? Look, let's get something straight. My job is very, very important to me, and I wouldn't think of leaving. But Mr. Dennis, Mr. Coe can't see you right now. I'm sorry, I'm on a tight schedule. I have a lot of people to interview here. But Mr. Coe is very busy. Did anybody tell him about the promotion? Yes, and he's very excited about that. Who here? But he's up to his ears in... Hot water? Sorry, sir. It's all right, Natalie. Edgar Coe. Nice office. Now, actually, I have a desk down the hall. However, working for an Interfund company does have its perks. So I see. I earned this life, Mr. Dennis. I came up the hard way, like Mr. Franken. Mr. Franken, is he the president of Harmony Investments? He's the CEO of the entire Interfund group. He didn't step right out of college and into some cushy job either, the way some of these yuppie kids did. You resent that fact, Mr. Coe? It's the way it works these days, right? Would you consider leaving if you could get more money someplace else? No raise in the world would tempt me to leave Interfund. It's a nice looking duck. Now, Mr. Gerard, you're involved in the movement of large amounts of money between Harmony Investments and Interfund, is that right? Yes, sir. Pretty heavy responsibility. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> Forgive me, Mr. Gerard, but you seem a little nervous. You sure you can cope with the stress of a new position? If the 
company wants to promote me, I'm sure I can manage somehow. You do like working for Interfund, don't you? Yes. Marvelous organization. It's terrific opportunities. <laughs> The results of a strange group of interviews. Why strange? Well, everything was going along fine, and suddenly they start clamming up like a bunch of fire eaters with sore throats. But they suspect that you're not there because of a possible promotion. The embezzler might, but I doubt they would. I tell you, there's a strange undercurrent surrounding these people that I can't quite put my finger on. Hmm. Maybe the company's got financial troubles. I doubt that. Cookwell said that Interfund has assets in the neighborhood of $600 million. If these people didn't know why you were really interviewing them, why were they so tense? I don't know. You know, stress is not my long suit, but something tells me these people are in serious need of exercise. Mr. Gerard was scheduled to take more tests. He seems to be late. Very late. I'm afraid I have some terrible news. Rob Gerard was discovered drowned this morning. He'd been swimming in the Potomac. Drowned in the Potomac? No. Apparently, Rob liked to start off his day with an early morning swim. I wonder if he was trying to start his day with an early morning suicide. Why would you say that? Well, it's just that uh, he appeared a little upset yesterday. Oh, no, 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 no. No way, Mr. Dennis. The authorities are convinced it was just a tragic accident. Well, listen, I've already talked to Ed Coe. He said he'd be more than happy to uh, take the rest of his tests now instead of this afternoon, so your time won't have been wasted. All right. I'm sorry. I'm just thrown by it all. I know. We all are. Oh, I suppose it's too early to tell whether uh, Rob might have been our embezzler? Actually, I'm sure he wasn't. He was stressed out, but I think it was job-related, not guilt. Yeah, that's uh, too bad. Oh, please, uh, phone me as soon as you have anything. Sorry, sir. Sorry. You ready for me? Yes. Uh, just that I can't get over what happened to Mr. Gerard. Well, he wouldn't have been able to handle promotion anyway. Let's try and not get all worked up about this. I'm just thinking about what's best for the company. That's why we're all here, isn't it? Something like that. Why don't you have a seat and we'll get started. I couldn't believe it when I heard. Rob Gerard was a very nice man. Although he wasn't really interfund material the way that I am. You seem very dedicated to your work. Very. Do you know much about the savings and loan business, Mr. Dennis? I'm afraid I know more about loans than savings. Well, if I can ever be of service. Maybe you can be. I'd like a little information about a new car loan. Well, I would be delighted to help. But I will still have to take the rest of those tests, won't I? Afraid so. What do you say we buy the new car and take a vacation? How, honey? Loans, loans, they're wonderful things. Is this the chance, Dennis, I married the man with the bear trap wallet? I was talking to the loan manager over at Monroy Savings, Lila, and she showed me how you can save money by borrowing money. It's the craziest thing. Lila, Elliot, you're taking financial advice from a possible embezzler? She's a whiz with numbers. Besides, I'm not sure it's her. She's only one of four possibilities. Oh, for goodness sakes, don't borrow any money from her. Why not? She may have plenty of it stashed away. Hugo, how's it going? Just keeping the world safe for bureaucracy. Good man. Better hurry, Ms. Dennis. Gotta pick up Gordon Houghton. Who's he? He was the second in command at the embassy in Benat. Was? 
He put his foot in his mouth one too many times. And the Sultan gave him the boot. He's back in Washington for debriefing and reassignment. And guess who gets to make sure that he stays quiet and out of trouble? How can a man who can't keep his mouth shut become a diplomat? Do the words political appointment mean anything to you? Oh, nobody explained it to me that way. <laughs> you got leftovers tonight, honey. I'll uh, see you later. Hugo, what do you say we get together for dinner tonight? Our government employees aren't supposed to. Ah, oh, come on, bend the rules. You bend them once, pretty soon you're breaking them. OK, break the rules. I'm talking T-bone steak, red skins, big screen TV, a friendly poker game. I get off at 7. Excuse me, guys. Goodbye. Hello, Professor Dennis. Can I help you? I didn't mean to intrude on your turf. If I may be impolite, what are you doing here and who are you? Mendelssohn. Hugh Mendelssohn, Bethania Insurance. Well, Mr. Mendelssohn, I think I have all the insurance I can use. <laughs> Lots of people think that, Professor. But you can never have too much. Do you sell theft insurance? Well, the door wasn't locked or anything. Oh, yes, it was. I don't think so. Didn't I see you loitering in the halls a few days ago? Me? Lots of people look like me. We don't get that many power ties on campus. Say, what is this, some kind of major Sherlock Holmes rap you lay on people or something? Criminology 101? What are you really selling, Mr. Mendelssohn? Uh, how about advice? Make your pitch. Stick to teaching. Freelancing for people you don't know anything about, well, that's, uh, it's not real swift. If you don't take my advice, I hope you keep up the payments on your premiums. diplomat until a reporter spotted him. Then he started blabbing on about sending in the Marines to secure all the oil fields in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> in the diplomatic circles, I think they call that war. Uh -huh. Mickey, somebody has stolen all the files I had on the Interfon group. Stole them? You think it was somebody who you investigated? Maybe, or maybe it was an insurance salesman who really isn't an insurance salesman. I'm sure that makes sense to you. Sounds like the embezzler was trying to cover his tracks. It won't help. Corey Gibson. She'll know these people. She raises funds for charity. Now, she knows the bank balance of everybody in this town. I'll give her your list of four finalists. Mickey, I may have to give the money back. Why? Well, there's something Cookwell's not telling me. There's something about this whole Interfront setup that's wrong. Now, I'm meeting with him in the morning. And if he doesn't give me the right answers, I'm out of it. There's more, isn't there? Well, I checked with Lieutenant Akers. The Gerard drowning, it's still open. Either the man was murdered, or he was very modest. What do you mean? He put his trunks on after he was dead. I'll get dinner. Excuse me, I'm looking for 7701. You found it? No, this is supposed to be the corporate headquarters of a $600 million company. Well, we had a couple of bad years. Yeah. Ah, at least this is still here. Oh, Mr. Dennis, those loan applications all filled out? Not yet. You wouldn't happen to have the address of the main office, would you? 669 Statlin Avenue. Statlin, Statlin. That's uh, inside the Beltway. No, hardly. That's in Chicago. Chicago? Mm-hmm. Then why would Cookwell have this address on his business card? I don't understand. Who's Cookwell? He is the man who hired me. I know most of the top executives at Monroy, and I've never heard of him. He is the vice president of Interfund. He is a man who arranged for us to talk. 
I'm not familiar with that company. You came in here for a car loan. Now, is there some problem with your credit? What is this? We talked about how much you like working for Interfun. I think you may have me confused with someone else. You guys bankrupt? Too many bad loans to South America or something? Mr. Dennis, Monroy does not make bad loans, which is why I don't think we'll be able to help you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of work to do. Mr. Dennis, happy to see me. Delighted. I have a confession to make. Make it short, Mendelssohn. I don't want to be late for class. I lied. I don't sell insurance. Oh, that's okay. I lied, too. I'm not really happy to see you. Well, maybe this will help. FBI. They're still not happy to see you. You should be. We're trying to protect you. Those guys you're working for in the $1,000 suits, they're not a financial institution, at least not a legitimate one. They're organized crime, the next generation. What? Wait a minute, what are you saying? Wake up, Professor. You're working for the mob. <sighs> we should have pulled you in sooner. But we didn't think you'd get anywhere. You did take my dossiers from the briefcase. Well, I intended to. Wanted to see how close you were getting. But somebody got there first. Who? You tell me. I got another question for you. Why would the FBI want to protect an embezzler, even if he is stealing from crooks? He isn't an embezzler, Professor. He's an FBI agent. A mole in deep cover. That's why Cookwell was going on about loyalty. Whether I was looking for an embezzler or a fed, he'd still be a traitor to the company. Or should I say company? Yeah, company's okay. Their organizational structure is corporate, but they give a whole new meaning to early retirement. Well, that explains the job-related stress. Well, then Monroy's savings is not a true s and I almost borrowed money from them. Well, Monroy is 90% legit. So is Harmony Investments, Wheel Rate Development, and all the rest of them. They're front operations. They dry clean soiled money and finance new ventures. Actually, Monroy's loan rates are quite competitive. But I wouldn't want to miss a payment. Well, then, uh, who killed Gerard and why? We're not sure. But it's our problem now. We were hoping you'd skip past our agent. Have you narrowed the list? Well, uh, I've narrowed it down to Lila Elliott, uh, Brian Hummel, uh, Neil Bradbury, and Ed Coe. I know. It's one of the four. Give me a few hours, I'll get it down to one. I believe you will. That's why you're out of it. We're almost ready to tie off this investigation and hand down indictments for racketeering. Almost? Our man needs more time. We can't pull him out of there yet. So just back off now, OK? Send us your files and go back to teaching. Are we connecting here? I get the message. This was not my idea, Mr. Dennis. I personally don't feel that this is the way to do business. Don't you dare quote me. Look, well, I've got a class to prepare for, Richard. I'm sorry I had to borrow these files without telling you. Thank you. It's okay. 
You see, I had hoped that your approach would um, solve all of our problems, and that would be that. Unfortunately, the answers you got were just a little bit too revealing, weren't they? Were they? How much have you figured out? Well, it doesn't really make any difference. I'm sure you've discovered that our company expects to get its money's worth. Look, Cook, well, I have your retainer check right here. You prefer cash? Your embezzler was too sneaky. I couldn't spot him. I, I give up. <laughs> no. No, no, I'm afraid it's not that easy. You'll have to see this through to the very end, whenever that may be. Well, why did you give me that whole line on the Interfund Group, and why did Lila Elliott lie to me? Mr. Dennis, this is a family business. We have very closely held secrets. Well, why did you come to Mr. me Mr. Dennis, believe me when I tell you, you know more than you need to know. And now? And now, we're faced with something I wanted to avoid. My father. Mr. Dennis, meet Gabriel Franken, my father, the founder of our um, company. Sir, I'm sorry, but I can't find the embezzler. We're wasting time. Take a chair, Mr. Dennis. He's narrowed the list to four, Father, and his conclusions seem valid. Sit. Four is not one. I want one. And I'm not convinced all this psychological mumbo-jumbo will give him to me. Your sensitive skin? Very. Actually, I use an electric razor. <laughs> well, then, sit very still. This shop was my father's. He was a poor but honorable man. He knew the meaning of loyalty. I keep everything just as it was in his time. A memorial. It's, it's a nice shop, sir. Thank you. I come here when the stress of my work becomes too great. You know, shaving my men, it relaxes me. I bet you're very good at it. You won't feel a thing. I nick real easy. Then I will be real careful. You know, your tests haven't given me the name of the traitor. The, the process is very complex, sir. I believe in the old ways, tested by time. You look a man in the eye, and you know if he lies. Then you thought Gerard was the embezzler. He blinked. Turned out he wasn't the one after all, Father. Then he shouldn't have blinked. Uh, I don't think I can help you, Mr. Franken. Uh, you know, my sideburns are just the right length. I hope you don't disappoint us. I'm giving my son another chance. His method. Now, I want the name of the man within 24 hours. I will feed all six to the fishers. We don't have much time. I still can't believe it, working for the mob. Nice going, Professor. Yeah, it's not going to look good on my resume. That's a safe bet. What's that smell? 50-year-old aftershave. Switch brands. <laughs> you know, these people act like they're in a routine business. Like, uh real estate or selling baby food. Yeah, but they're murder on the competition. Have you got a chance to talk to the FBI or Mendelssohn? We chatted. And? And? 
understand, Cookwell told me that they're looking for an FBI agent. He gave me that information when he dropped me off to buy my car. Look, Chance, I can't get officially involved at this point, but Mendelssohn tells me you're not in any immediate danger. Are you kidding? They killed Gerard because he blinked. If I do what they say, an FBI agent dies. If I don't, six people die. I don't like that kind of math. Mendelssohn wants you to stall a day or two so he can line up his ducks. I don't have a day or two, and I'm the only duck in line. Everybody else is carrying a shotgun. I'm working on it. In the meantime, stay loose. Stay loose? That's the best I got, buddy. Hey, Chance, Senator Gore. Listen, I just read your new book. It's terrific. Well, stay loose. Thank you. Playing through, Professor. Hugo, how are you? Chance, honey, we've been waiting for you. Come on, come on. Ah, Mr. Dennis, your lovely wife has just been showing me this article you wrote for Criminology Today. Fascinating. Mr. Gordon Howden, may I present my husband, Chance Dennis? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you play golf, Mr. Dennis. Can't get enough of it. Well, I'm an avid golfer myself. Your wife has told us so much about you. Well, she was just probably being diplomatic. <laughs> Honey, I think we got to get you changed for that exclusive little dinner party tonight. Would you excuse us a moment? No, oh, of course. <sighs> Honey, have you been drinking martinis? No, it's my aftershave. Mickey, I got some good news and some bad news. Oh, give me the good news. Lose the bad news. Bad news is Interfun is just a fancy name for a bunch of crooks. What? Yes, I assumed. Fell into the same trap I've lectured about in my class. Honey, give me the good news. Good news is they still like me. And Lieutenant Akers assures me there's no danger yet. Oh, Chance, you can't... Everything will be okay. Just trust me. Have you had a chance to talk to that charity lady? What's her name? Uh, Corey Gibson. No, you can't go on working for these people, Chance. Mickey, they've seen my notes. If somebody is killed because of my notes, I'll never forgive myself. I'll contact Corey in the morning. Now, you stop by the McKinley Hotel on your way to class. That's where Mr. Houghton is staying. I'll be there. I can't go with you tonight, though. Oh, it's okay. Uh, looks like you're doing a good job of holding the lid on, Mr. Houghton. I hope this assignment's not nearly the nightmare I thought it was going to be. Oh, right, folks, we're on the clock here. Yeah. Nice to have met you, Mr. Houghton. Well, won't you join us? I'd love to, but I've had a hectic day. Uh, playing golf. I tell you, riding around that little golf cart can be exhausting. So if you'd excuse me. Four. Mr. Houghton, one question, please. Mr. Houghton, after the meeting. Mr. Houghton, why were you expelled from the Sultanate of Banat? Mr. Houghton has no comment. And Miss Dennis, I do feel I owe the public explanation. We have to keep going here. Do you really favor military takeover of foreign oil fields, sir? Back off here, sir. It was misquoted. Uh, well, rather, not, not exactly misquoted. The Sultan misunderstood. Come on, Excuse now, me, we have to get to a very important meeting. We do? Mickey. Oh, help. Mickey, what about that information? Just I gotta get back to class. Midterm. The report was the entire Banati royal family. Mr. Houghton has nothing but the highest regard for the royal family. Did you, in fact, insult them, sir? Well, not at all. I merely passed off a jocular comparisons, that's all. I certainly did not intend to insult the royal family. Ladies and gentlemen, please! This is just a photo opportunity. 
Maybe the information. Corey says that Hummel, Bradbury, and Elliot are all young Turks on the fast track to fame and fortune. Uh, Turks? What about the Turks? Uh, Mr. Howden has nothing but the highest regard for the Turks. I really feel I should clarify. And they all graduated from Ivy League schools, either business or law. Easily misunderstood. Hummel was Harvard Law. Halton's harem is the cutest little. Mr. Houghton. Old families, but no old money. These people are living far beyond their means. That's so cool is the odd man out. Well, yeah, nobody knows anything about him. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Houghton is late for a meeting with the president. I am. Uh, Mickey. Mr. Houghton. Uh, send him a telegram. Mr. Dennis has a statement to make. What? Uh, hi. Well, um, did, did you know that Mr. Houghton was an avid golfer? Of course, he's no Dan Quayle. <laughs> then again, who is? <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Come on, Naomi. We're going for quality, not quantity. There. The textbook isn't this long, but I know you did well. Yeah. Excuse me. If you guys are here for your midterms, you're late. I'm here as your friend and voice of reason. Thanks. Mendelssohn, you've got to get your mole into safety. I tried. He's not ready. Either I tell them who he is, or Franken's going to kill six people. I hear you. At first, we were just trying for some of their upper echelon management. Now he tells me he has access to some records that'll nail Franken and his son, too. He just needs a couple more days. He doesn't have a couple of days. What about you, Chance? You know the play is you've been to their front operation. There's no way they let you walk. Thanks. I've been trying not to think about that. We'll protect you, Professor. Forever? I don't care how big a net you use, somebody will get away and these people don't forgive. Stan, I don't think I like your voice of reason. Chance, you really think you can spot this mole? I'm almost there, but he's good at protecting himself. With his job, he'd better be. Yeah, his job is the key. You sure you got this guy? Fifty bucks says I'm sure. You're on. Hey, fellas, now wait a minute. If Mr. Dennis can pick out our agent, I am putting him in protective custody right now. I'm not going to be responsible for the deaths of six people. Stan is right. Mick and I will be looking over our shoulders for the rest of our lives. Yeah, well, I'm not going to let you trash four years' worth of work. You want your man to survive? You want those records? There's only one way I know that can happen. I'm listening. I'll go back to see Franken. You can't. And I tell him who the mole is. <laughs> until your deadline, Mr. Dennis. That's cutting it a little fine, isn't it? Well, I'm sure you can appreciate why I didn't want to make a mistake. Yes, I can. Are you sure you know who this person is, Mr. Dennis? Dead sure. Then let's get on with it. Well, it's a tricky problem. The person you were looking for thought that uh, he or she could fool my test. How would he do that, Mr. Dennis? Well, I was looking for someone who was disloyal to your organization. But that FBI mole had a very strong loyalty to his or her job. So? So, whenever he answered questions about disloyalty to your organization, he thought of his real job, that of a loyal FBI agent. Except that he or she forgot that that kind of evasion can become predictable. That's enough. You could go on explaining it into the next century. And I still wouldn't understand it or care. Now raise your arm, point your finger, and let's get on with it. Why are you looking at me? It could have been you. Except that your test results show that you're more concerned about appearing tough enough to survive in the corporate cutthroat climate of Interfun. Cutthroat? Uh, just a figure of speech, sir. I hope. Is it him?
him? No. Both of these men stand out too much. Too excessive. The man you're looking for camouflages himself very well, blends in. You blend in, don't you, Mr. Hummel? Every time I asked you about Interfon, you told me how much you liked your job. Well, no, that's not exactly right. I understand that, well, these days, a lot of FBI agents have Harvard Law degrees. You've just killed the both of us. original shot. You did us a favor, Mr. Dennis. I killed a man. None of our people will say anything. In return, of course, you will forget you ever met with us. You're asking me to make a pact with the devil. Don't be melodramatic. I'm negotiating a simple business deal. Your silence concerning our activities and Hummel's death remains a mystery. It's a good offer. Take it. <laughs> This is insane. I've got to face up to what I've done. Now listen to me. Wait a minute. Now listen to me. It wasn't your fault. It was an accident. It was an accident. But you don't... There will always be victims, Mr. Dennis. With Hummel dead, there's no one to testify. Without the records that Hummel was after, the government cannot prove a thing, and our employees will not say a word. Right. Loyalty is one of the cornerstones of your company, I remember. Yes, well, even though your success vindicated me, I didn't want it to turn out this way. Neither did I. I am sorry. Mr. Taylor, I've been very patient. Since you say your only witness was murdered, the court sees no reason at all why Mr. Franken and his son should be included in the charges brought against the other individuals in your indictment. It does not please the court that justice can be dictated by the violent act of murder of a key witness. However, I am bound to honor the laws of this country even when I may question the outcome. Therefore, I have no other reason. Your Honor, please. Yes. Your Honor, I've just been informed that uh, Mr. Hummel apparently succeeded in mailing something to the FBI. May we approach the bench, Your Honor? Your Honor, it's all here. Every link necessary to connect Mr. Franklin and his son to the other individuals we now have under indictment. Places and dates. The Frankens were exceptionally able businessmen. They kept records of everything. You may return to your seats. Mr. Gabriel Michael Franken and Mr. Justin Cookwell Franken, will you rise and face the court? Gentlemen, I find sufficient evidence here to have you bound over for trial. No. No! 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 Order! Let's go. No! Come on. No! preliminary hearing. Prosecution and defense counsels. I'd like to schedule trial dates at your earliest convenience. Please check with the clerk.
I'm willing to juggle my schedule to ensure the two gentlemen who have just left us get their day in court as soon as possible. Court is now adjourned. Yeah, it was necessary, Mickey, believe me. If Franken suspected we faked that death, he would have found a way to retaliate, even from behind bars. Now, are you sure Chance is safe, Stan? Frankens have no reason to suspect a thing. What'll happen to Agent Hummel? Well, Mendelssohn tells me Hummel's already headed undercover out west somewhere. Beyond that, we'll probably never know. Brave man. So's the man I married. <laughs> no, personally, I never thought you'd bring it off. <laughs> Old voice of reason. <laughs> Mickey, uh, what happened to Houghton? Is he safe now? Oh, we put him on a plane. I don't think we've heard the last of him, though. Where'd he go? Deputy counsel at our embassy in Beijing. Ooh, out of the frying pan. And, and into the wok. <laughs> <laughs> but, honey, after all we've both been through, there's still no money for our vacation. Sweetheart, there was no way I could have kept any of that money. Oh, I know. I'm just bidding a fond farewell to the Bahamas. And that second car. Keep off the grass, please. Oh, sorry, Lieutenant. Wait a minute. I did make some money on this case. Lieutenant. You owe me $50. What? Come on, come on. You bet me $50, I couldn't find that FBI mole. I did, didn't I? Yes, you did. Well, as Charles I said, keep no bad company, lay no wagers. I guess old Charlie was right, huh? <laughs> well, this won't buy that second car, but it can get me two bicycle tires. A night in Maryland. Next on Snoops. It doesn't make sense. Steal some Pentagon equipment? Murder another general? No, of course not. Nothing like that. Nah. That would be illegal, wouldn't it? The Pentagon's a big place. All that's missing is a couple male strippers. Uh, we have a theory. What? It's kind of a family theory. Snooping is genetic. That's impossible. They do it all over Europe. Of course, I've never had Nazis chasing me. You are going to get to the bottom of this. How low does it go? Freeze! Just kidding. <laughs> Get ready for a Friday evening filled with deception, dirty dealing, and danger. Later tonight, it's a season premiere of Falcon Crest with a couple of real surprises and a brand new cast member. But first, JR is behind Bobby's back again. So put your remote on hold and hold on for Dallas next.